loves welcome back to another video it's your girl Arian Styles and today's video is going to be more on moving to Canada I did post some questions on my Instagram if you haven't followed me just yet you should go ahead and hit that follow button so I did ask some questions on my Instagram and you guys you know had the questions coming so I'm here to answer them today so if this is a video that you're interested in just keep on watching all the good vibes running through my mind nothing can stop me I'm on a high all the good vibes running through my mind and I'm having a glass of wine and the wine that I'm having I actually got from the winery that I went to the other day um, on in Niagara on the lake and it's called the pink slip and this wine was made from the exact farm that we went to the wine farm that we went to and I like it it's not too sweet so I just balance it off with a little bit of you know ginger ale to make it a little bit of bubbly but yeah um, that's what I'm having I'm having some barbecue wings with fries and I'm gonna answer these questions also bear in mind that I do have my little munchkin with me he's right here so if you hear a little babble babble <laughs> you know what it is I'm sure you do. why are you doing that okay loves so <laughs> I was going to you know have my dinner and have a glass of wine and talk to you guys but then I thought about it and I was like you know, it's kind of rude to be munching and crunching and trying to talk on camera so I'm just gonna have a sip of my wine and get into these questions So as I said before, I've been living here since August 2018 and when I say here, I just, I mean Ontario, Canada, I've not lived outside of this particular province. So just a disclaimer, every province is different and I'm really answering from the perspective of being in Ontario, which is very different, way more expensive, all of that. So just want to put that out there. So the first question that I have is what are some tips on finding a job in the knock that will lead to a PR? So if you guys haven't checked out my video or Chef B's video, we have a part one and part two. Part one is on Chef B's channel, part two is on my channel. I do suggest that you check that out first because it will put some of these terms, you know, into perspective and provide a little bit more explanation so the knock code is essentially like an occupational code so if you're applying for your PR particularly through the federal skilled worker or the Canadian experience class you need to have a job that falls under the a B or zero code so say for example um, you are a financial analyst that's the job that you're doing what you would do prior to going into the pool is to go and type in financial analyst you can literally type in financial analyst on Google or type in knock code for financial analyst there is a list like an extensive list and that will take you to the Canadian website and then you know that will say oh you're under a you're under B you're under zero you're under C so in general um, you really need a code a B or I think zero don't quote me on that but all I know is if you have anything from C upwards you may not be able to you know apply under those two classes for the other classes I wouldn't be able to speak on those but I know like if it's a um, provincial nomination or something like that the rules are different so I'm speaking in terms of you know the federal skill worker or the Canadian experience class which the average um, Jamaican and I'm talking about because I came from Jamaica or you know the average immigrant usually apply through those two methods not saying that's the only method okay but how do you find jobs the first thing is you really have to put yourself out there and in some cases you literally have to dumb down your resume 
um, so say for example you have this vast amount of experience from Jamaica and all of that some companies might not want to hire you um, because if they feel the capacity in which you're applying for a job is way below what your standards are they either feel you're too over, you're like you're overqualified or they cannot pay you so that's some of the things that you have to really consider um, the next thing it what worked in my case is that I'm in the financial services industry so I literally went to the bank and you know left off my resume some will say that is luck okay so um, yeah that's basically what I have on you know finding job there's no rule book there's no blueprint it's honestly just knowing that you have to find one if you searching and as I said before there are so many websites here that you can use to you know find jobs and then you can do the good old going into these places to find jobs um so that's basically that so the next question is you know what are the work opportunities um there are jobs but to be honest <laughs> Um, just like Jamaica or anywhere in the Caribbean, they are looking for experience and obviously if you're new to Canada, you know, you do not have Canadian experience so that I'm just going to be honest, it can be challenging finding a job, even with all the credentials that you might have, um, from Jamaica, because it's just not the same. This is why I say, if you're going to come to school, find an institution that does co-op because you are then you know in most cases with the co-op you are you have a part of your program where people from different organizations you know recruiters from different organizations come in and you can get to pitch yourself you can get to apply for jobs that are openings that they have and stuff like that so there are opportunities here it's just that they are not any easier than anywhere else and then to my first question the first question I discussed about finding jobs LinkedIn is the he here like everyone needs a LinkedIn if you're looking for jobs and you don't have a LinkedIn yet are you really looking for a job so honestly you need a LinkedIn profile almost every job that you'll apply for they'll ask you for your URL for your LinkedIn so you can also meet a lot of recruiters on LinkedIn and you know a recruiters can reach out to you as well so those are some of the ways you can find jobs here and the opportunities there are opportunities the next question is what if you come up on a skilled program is it the same as getting your PR in one year honestly I don't want to say yes or no I do not have the information as it relates to the other programs like a skilled program a lot of those programs have their own rules like honestly their own rules so I wouldn't be able to say um, if it's done in a year or not um, so the next question is the PR process after studying if one is studying for one year is required for applying for the PR um, let me assume that you're asking if you can apply for a PR after one year if that's the question yes because that's what I did um, but it's harder let me say why it's harder um, because you only have one year experience and also um, you may not have enough points by that one year so you know be in the pool and get drawn and get all of that so let me just break this down there's a there's a pool system it's like a it's like a door you want to go through but you have certain requirements for going through that door in order to get to the the glory place and the glory place is the PR getting your PR if you come here on a one-year program that gives you after your one year of school is over you get a one-year work permit it means you are able to work full-time for a full year so if you come if you you know go to school for two years or more you get I think three years work permit um, so my thing is I didn't want to pay for that many years of school I already have my undergrad for people who are just coming here to do your undergrad then naturally you are going to get those 
um, number of years um, per work permit because the average time to get a bachelor's is like three to four years. So naturally, you would end up with getting a longer permit. In my case, I, I got a one year work permit, which meant that um, before or on my last day on my permit, I should have been called to come to that door. And when you're called to the pool, it means that that's where you're putting all your documents, you send in your passport, you send in all of that. You, you are not approved yet, but you are called to apply to go to the glory gate, right? So that's really what it is. But if you have a longer work permit, say over a year, it means you have over a year's work, no, um, like number of work experience. And that also means that you will have more points than the person who only has one year work permit. So your chances of, you know, being called is stronger than somebody like me who only has a year. What worked in my favor is that I wasn't fresh out of university. I was already working for three, what, two to three years. So I had experience. And then the good thing is the experience that I had fell under the knock code that was re required. But if I had that job experience only, given it's two to three years, I probably wouldn't have enough points. So it's that in addition to the one year school that I did um, and my English exam gave me the points. Okay, so the next question is, um, if I don't have all the monies in my account, what else can I use as proof? So, um, you don't necessarily have to show everything in like hard cash. You can have it in investments. Say for example, you have a car that you own. So you know like, in my case, I owned a car. I wasn't pay had any payments or anything on it. So what I could do was, what I did was to show the value of the car and my, um, what do you call that? my ownership so I showed that so I knew that if it like I what I wrote because you you can write letters or you can write notes to explain everything so what I did was to say I have this car I'm not quite ready to sell it just yet um, but if needs be this is the value and I can sell it so you don't necessarily need to have it in like cash or anything like that and also you can have a sponsor so say for example your mom's gonna pay your tuition or quote unquote your mom's gonna pay your tuition so they would they could show what they have to contribute um by showing their bank account so that's another way that you so you don't necessarily have to show everything in your name and you know in cash so the other question is, did you use an agency in Jamaica to apply for school? And in Jamaican dollars, how much do I need? For the first part of that question, I did use an agency and it's called Jamaica to Canada. The gentleman that assisted me, his name is Mr. Anton Brown. Um, I personally would recommend him to anyone like He's going to tell you if something cannot work and he has so much experience in the industry with the schools with everything like you know you're taken care of like sometimes you might not hear or you might not like to hear necessarily what he's saying but he's speaking off of what he knows and that's always good because you're coming to new grounds unfamiliar grounds like you are putting money in applying for something that you are hoping you are successful in. So I would suggest if you want to have a higher chance, not to say he has any impact on your success in getting the visa and all of that, he does not, but he has enough experience in the field to tell you when your case is not strong enough. So I've seen cases where people are turned on, particularly because of the monies. 
their agency or their lawyers underestimated what they would need and you know that's another money for you to apply again you know differing from schools all of that a whole process i was not able to go through so i use them and i would definitely suggest if you're looking for someone check out jamaica, jamaica to canada this is not a promotion i doubt he remembers who i am but to help another sister or another brother I would say you need help or if you're working I was working I did not have the time to do all of those documents hmm. so I didn't <laughs> um, every <laughs> someone says they want to know everything well you gotta be specific um, but Another question, and I think this is a good question, it, did I have any experience with racism or microaggression? Um, let me just put it this way. <laughs> Canadians are not as nice as, as how they want it to seem. They are definitely nicer than their neighbors. <laughs> <laughs> they're definitely nicer than their neighbors and I mean the US but um, there is going to be racism but it's very covert um, it's nothing that if you're unfamiliar with what racism is you probably won't pick it up but I used to go and work on travel program every year so I know how to spot it I know how to deal with people who are just not outright racist what they are so that's not to deter you in any way the only thing though i must say is that in certain industries like for example i can tell you about the financial services industry it's mainly asians mainly caucasian um people and what that I think that means and that just might be my experience I'm not trying to taint it for anyone um, but what I would say is that because a lot of you and I are not there we're not there to advocate for each other and you'll find that the the Southeast Asians and the Asians they are able to advocate for advocate for each other if you get what I mean that's the only thing but I personally haven't really experienced any racism and I work in a company where if I did experience any I'm, I'm going to call it out and I know what my rights are especially in these times where you know with the whole Black Lives Matter movement and everything I'm not going to let anyone be overtly even covertly racist to me and I don't address it so if I experience it, I would definitely address it. But for now, I, I wouldn't say so. I've had quite a, like a lucky time with meeting people, meeting people from all you know walks of life, and they are they are nice, you know. So um, yeah, that's it. But come with the expectation that you know it's it's not going to be the same as your your little islands. It's it's not going to be it it's much more there are many different races and all of that so it's different that much i can say it's different i wouldn't necessarily say it's racist in my opinion but there is racism next question that i got someone wants to know how to migrate via work if you're talking about coming like on those labor programs that's a whole different thing I don't know what it is but I know like if you're coming to work it's either in my opinion or what I know is that if you're coming to work it's either you're coming for school or you're applying for your PR through the express entry from Jamaica Someone wants to know how I prepared for the IELTS. So the IELTS is the English test. As I said before, I did both. I did self peep and I did IELTS. I don't know if the weightings for IELTS is different from the weighting for self peep because I got good grades in self peep, but when I put those in the 
the tool to you know see what my points were to go into the pool i wasn't getting as much so i said you know what? i'm gonna chance it and do the elves instead of doing the self dip again so what i how i prepared there is this website there is this guy on youtube and the page is called e2 and i'll put it on the screen here it's called e2 isles and that's what i used to prepare i studied a lot and i practiced a lot i know it's weird to say you're studying english but literally you have to study it like you have to there are four like you know sections of it there's speaking writing reading and listening and there's a certain skill that is required for all four parts that if you don't practice, you're gonna say, oh, I'm from an English speaking country, that's my main language, I can do it. Yes, you can do it, but what they're looking for, you're, 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 you're probably not gonna get the grades they're looking for, honestly. Um, so this guy, he's from England, and England has because obviously Canada speaks British English just like Jamaica so the criteria is the same and for their like school system or whatever they do the IELTS as well it's a British exam so yeah this is a British lecturer and he personally does these exams to see what has changed to see what grades he, he gets to, in order to uh, like assist you in preparing for the exam so he has practice questions he has all of that you you time yourself you do all that so that's what i did and i promise you it helped honestly because doing it on my own i was just like oh i'm studying but was i really studying um, i don't think so so yeah i would say if you're if you want to prepare for the alps and if you're planning to come here for school you can try doing the IELTS in Jamaica first. I think the exam is valid for two years. So if you're gonna do one year of school, you, you can try doing the IELTS first. They do it in Jamaica at UWE, I think. So the next question is, in your opinion, what is the best province to live in and why? So people say this province is better, this province is better, and it's for various reasons. It all depends on what you are looking for like what matters the most to you so like if you want ease of like getting your foot in you know ease of getting your PR Ontario might not be the best province and when I say best it's overall the best because you're probably gonna have a community all of that but when I say it's not the best I mean in the aspect of cost per you know like living expenses you know um ease of actually getting through you know job opportunities it's more saturated all of that so it's like it's like living in the city of kingston you know there are so many jobs there there are so many opportunities there but almost everyone in kingston has education has something to offer blah blah, blah. so you're, you have more competition while and that's why i use that comparison to ontario because ontario would be like the the city you know but if you go to some of the more remote areas um say manitoba not to say it's baka world but it's baka world manitoba you know alberta all of that you might make more money one or because your cost of living is less you get more take home funds um it might be easier for you to get through the pr the points might be you, you need less points to get in in the first place all of that so ontario is probably one of the one off the few warmer provinces um you will necessarily have a community like you have a jamaican society you'll see more of our color if that's something that matters to you so honestly i wouldn't say there's any better province it's honestly what you're looking for so in my case my partner was in ontario he's the main reason i was coming here so why would i go to another province if it is that we both decide we're gonna move to another province then that's a different case but why would i go there 
and also <laughs> it's already hard enough to deal with the cold here i don't know if i can stomach the cold of living in one of those provinces like they know why they pay more it's harder to live there but some people love it you know so again it's about preference i went to british columbia and i really like it i really really liked it but it, it was tropical it felt nice what well, tropical <laughs> as tropical as you can get it felt good and all of that but it was very remote like it was so small there were not a lot of black people all of that things you would need to consider so like it all depends on what you're looking for like I like a work-life balance so wherever I'm living I want to ensure that I can actually live life you know and I don't want to feel too far from home and when I say far from home I mean home to me is not just a location it's what i'm used to you know being able to get some jamaican food if i want to be able to get like a key if i want to stuff like that and in certain provinces it's not as popular getting hair products getting hair extensions all of that it's not the same so it all depends on what you are looking for then yeah Someone is asking, do you think applying through school is, bet is a better option than applying through the point system? Honestly, it's all the same. You have to get points at the end of the day. But I think the what you're asking is, if it's better to just apply from wherever, whichever country you're coming from and applying through the federal skilled worker and coming directly to Canada with your PR, or it makes more sense to come through school all depends on the stage you're at in life a number of factors your age your your um, work experience how skilled you are like um you know all of those things so if you have a vast amount of experience like quality work experience then you might stand a better chance of just applying there so you're still working in jamaica still doing everything etc etc and just waiting for your pr application to be approved from jamaica with your jamaican experience right that might make more sense for you but if your experience in jamaica is like you're a teller in in a bank in jamaica yes you have work experience but um that wouldn't give you a lot of points also if you are older like the older you get the lesser your point standing so if you are say 38 per se yeah 38 your your points based on age will not be high right so in that case it may make more sense for you to come to canada do one or two years of school and that way you're not coming through the federal system but you're coming through the canadian experience class higher chance of getting through like for example i have a friend um so i have a friend that we both worked well worked with the same company and she came here she's older she's old, like a mature woman um she had she had her job work experience in jamaica all of that you know working in credit everything has her husband a son who's like 14 or 15 so you know she's she's not no spring chicken she's a more mature woman so like for her she came through school what that provided for her was that if she applied through the express entry profile by being in jamaica her age might have worked against her her job experience may not be strong enough to give her all the points that she needed so she came here um to do she did two years of school and she came when you when you're married, you can come with your spouse and you can bring your child if you have a child. Your child will be able to go to school, so they'll get a, a permit for school. 
and your your husband or wife would get a work permit so they're able to work full-time legally and you go to school so the two years of school the additional education um greater um, points in the english test all of that brought her points further up you know so it kind of compensated for the age issue so yeah that's that's what I would say. It all depends on your situation. <laughs> Next question. What's the best bank, network provider, and all of that? Let me be very honest with you. Every last one of them telephone company are teeth. And all of them are cousin. All of them related. I'm upset. So the two main players are Rogers and Bell and literally they own every small company so literally I don't know which one of them better but right now I use Chatter, I use Chatter Mobile and Chatter is a prepaid system like me, I don't think the phone company take out no money out of my account every month so for me to add it the Monday and I feel like I make my phone lock off and just done. Hmm? And it's the phone that mean that much to me. So I have Chatter. Chatter Mobile is under Rogers, but Chatter is a prepaid um, telephone provider. So honestly, I really like Chatter because I pay I pay fifty dollars for ten gigabytes of data. And anyway, the ten gigabytes done, they say done. While if you're with Rogers. And when the 10 gigabytes is done, they might charge you for more to keep using it. By the time you look at 100 and 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 you can find some. I just won't give it to make any suggestions here. I'm just kidding. You could probably um, check out Tangerine or something. They are not as big, so if you need if you need wide access to certain things or whatever, they might not be the bank for you. But as in, in regards to fees, they are okay. It's just that here in Canada, mm, almost all banks are the same. They are literally. It literally comes down to customer service at the end of the day because they, they probably all charge the same fees, do that, all of that. So it's down to customer service. It's down to who you like at the end of the day. So can one get a PR just by doing a one-year program? If yes, explain. I think I've touched on this before. Yes, yes, yes. You can... Um, get your PR by you doing a one-year program. I'm a testimony to that. I've only did a one-year program But if this is your first time in any post-secondary institution a one-year may not work for you But I had a degree before so what I did was a postgraduate um, Certificate uh, Yeah, so someone just wants to know what's the procedure so if you're gonna do it the way that I did, so I'm, I came through school, then the procedure is first to gather your documents and then you either find an agency or you do it on your own and you apply to the schools of your choice um, in the area that you choose, in the province that you choose and all of that. Say for example, you have family here and they live in a particular area you can communicate with them and find out what schools are closest to them so that the commute is not too far after you've applied for the school and all of that while you're waiting on your answer you start even though you don't know the answer yet chances are you will find a school um, because my agent my agent um applied to multiple schools um so the program that I wanted to get into at Humber, so I went to Humber College, and the program that I wanted to get into was actually waitlisted. So 
I was kind of worried and I said, you know, I reached out to him and I was like, you can you apply for this school for me just in case I'm not able to get into Humber. He did that. So I was accepted to three colleges here and I chose the one that I wanted to go to after I was done. I gathered all my documents, gathered my funds, gathered the proof of the funds. Um, you know, get your passport. If your passport expired, you ensure that you renew that you do all of those and literally give the documents to your agent or, or, and allow, give them all the information and they will apply for the visa for you and take everything from there on. So they're your representative. The embassy will communicate to, the, to you through your agent. If you are doing it on your own, then you gather all your documents, you go and you apply for your, um, your, uh, what do you call it? You apply for your visa, you go in and you do your biometrics. Even if you have an agent, you still have to go in and do your biometrics. That's the only thing you do. You go in with your photographs and do your biometrics and then your agent will do everything else. Um, otherwise, you have to do that on your own. So literally, that's the procedure. Um, once you come here, when you're at the airport, you'll get your work permit, you'll get your study permit, and you'll get a SIN. And that's the social insurance number. If you're from the US or if you're familiar with the US, it's like having a social security number. So it's your identification in regards to like taxes and all of that, your social insurance number. You get that if you didn't get your work permit at the airport, you then apply for it once you've landed officially. Um, so yeah, that's literally the procedure and then you get ready to go to school, if you're going to school. So someone is asking, is school the easiest way out? In my opinion, <laughs> my opinion, I'm going to tell you, um, my situation, the school was the easiest way out. Um, because I didn't have the work experience that was necessary to, to make me, you know, have a high chance of just applying from Jamaica. So that was the easiest way for me. And yeah, but if you have quite, if you think your work experience is very good, you have a number of years under your belt and all of that, then you, you can speak with an agency and they'll tell you, how strong your case is to just apply from there but usually the school route if you follow the rules you do all that then you'll get your PR next question is cost of living so cost of living is again going to be in regards to Ontario and I live in Mississauga so again cost of living cost of living is going to be in regards to Ontario and also even though you're in the province of Ontario every city in Ontario is different some of the most expensive cities are Mississauga and Toronto it's called like the greater Toronto area anywhere in that area is usually a very a very very expensive like the average rent the average rent um, is 1,500 Canadian dollars and over that's the average rent um, I would say for the average person, if you have a car, which you have a car payment, you have insurance, you have a rent, some rent includes utilities, like mine, mine includes the utilities. So if you have a rent, you have mm, all the other groceries, all of that. So I would say the cost of living is very high. The cost of living is very high, but you obviously can just live within your means. If you have to live in someone's basement, if you have to, you know, live in a smaller place, then do that. If you don't, if you have to commute via public transport, public transit, do that because insurance is very, very, very expensive in the Greater Toronto area. Um, so that's a big expense. And you know, a car is not an asset, it's an expense as well. So it all depends on what you take on. But long and short of it, the cost of living is high. Um, but you can make good money. 
you know you can make good money i'm just going to touch on a few things so i was asked questions in my dm and i'm just going to provide the answer that i gave to them just in case it's helpful to anyone out there so there's one um, person that asked if they could take their son with them yes usually even if you're coming for school and you have a family you can take them with you but i don't know financially what your proof has to be for that i would assume that you would need to show that you can financially support that child you know but you can take your family um in that case if you if you have your partner your husband it would make sense to come with them as well because they get a work permit so you st you still have a full income coming in because you can only work 20 hours when you are going to school unless your school is on a schedule break on a schedule break and a schedule break is like summer holidays christmas holidays that's just not you taking a semester off to work full time your school has to be on a break and in that case you can work full time so a lot of people was asking for the agent that i use again it's called www.jamaicatocanada.com and the gentleman his name is anton brown you can find his contact details email and telephone number online it's an established business he has all the credentials so i don't it's it's no scam i've used him before as i said before but it does cost a little bit because just me telling you my experience again that's just my experience but he has knowledge of the the whole system as well as experience that he has with dealing with multiple clients so i would say if you're uncertain you can do a consultation see if it works for you it may not be suitable for you it may just be in your best interest to apply from jamaica you know or apply from whichever country you're living in okay loves so just to sum it up um you know everyone's experience is different every province is also very different the rules the regulations what you'll need to come here or to live here is very different in all provinces um so my information that i've you know been spilling is obviously geared towards people who are looking to come to ontario again you don't necessarily need to come to ontario if you if you don't have any families you don't have any ties then it shouldn't really matter where you're going to live or at least that shouldn't be the deciding factor you know if you're coming here just to come for an opportunity you can always go to one of the less expensive provinces even if it's colder and do all of what you need to do get your pr you can obviously move anywhere else so that those are some of my tips i would say people ask me about you know crime here violence if you survive in the caribbean you're alive and well you will do just fine you'll be okay so those are you know some of my my opinions on moving to canada if you do have any more questions i will try to you know put question box on my instagram you guys can be a lot more specific with the questions that you have and i'll try my best to either answer them with the knowledge that i have or get the answers for you um yeah so hopefully i was able to help you guys either make a decision or solidify your decision you know make that step if you're young you don't have any family in jamaica you don't have any strong ties holding you to anywhere then go the world is your oyster experience other places you can obviously get your your pr here create opportunities for your future children if you do have kids it's something you can consider again it's not easy and it's not cheap it's not easy it's not cheap gather all the funds that you need to gather gather all the information that you need to have because coming here to school or coming as a new PR a new permanent resident you need to come with something because your first few years are going to be 
difficult i can tell you your first few years are going to be difficult and you are going to weather some storms but you know it's going to get better it's it's a new thing it's a new place it's all of that and so you have to literally go through the motions so again hopefully i was able to provide you with the information that you're looking for again if you have any questions you can shoot me the questions on instagram or you can leave them in the comment section below and i will try to you know do more chats like this every now and then again thank you so much for tuning into another video don't forget to like subscribe and share also comment and i'll see you in my next video bye <laughs>